Hello, Hello. fans of Body Coaching. My name is Derek Ogindi with the Mr. Olympia. Today, we have four of the main icons of bodybuilding. One of them is an active bodybuilder by the name of Andrew Jack, who has just conquered the Arnold UK. He also won the Texas Pro, considered to be one of the best genetics in the current bodybuilding circuit. Andrew Jack has stormed the IFBB Pro League with amazing genetics, very good conditioning, and great muscularity. Good evening, Andrew. I know you're in Dubai. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. Good evening, bro. Thank you so much. Also with him, his coach, the iconic George Farah. He's a national champion, an IFBB pro uh, athlete, and also one of the greatest coaches of all times. He was the coach of Dexter Jackson, Branch Warren, and Bob Chicarillo when he turned pro, mm -hmm. correct? That's right. Cool. How are you, George? What's up, guys? Thank you so much. Also with us, the 1992 Mr. USA's. He's a five-time uh, Arnold Classic champion. He's one, considered to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest genetic of all times. He is the one and only Flex Wheeler. Good afternoon, Flex. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> and also with us, the 2000 Mr. USA's. He is a master Olympian. He is the voice of bodybuilding, the athlete's representative, Robert Cicciarillo. Good What's afternoon. What's up? Well said. Still can't pronounce my name after 20 years. <laughs> Sean, Ray, Sean Ray said, Tarek, it's Robert Cicciarillo. I said, it's Bob Chick. He goes, no. I've known Cicciarillo. Him. You should know better than to listen to Sean. Come on. I mean. Well, <laughs> talking about Sean Ray, I spoke to Sean Ray yesterday, last night, and I said, Sean, how good is this guy, Andrew Jack? And Sean, like myself, like you, Bob, we're very conservative. We want to see guys in the Olympia. We want to see guys at the Arnold in Ohio. And Sean Ray said, Tarek, this guy is as good as it gets. He has amazing lines. He is the, he's the Dennis Wolf of our era. And Dennis Wolf went up to win the Arnold Classic in Ohio. He said, I am so impressed. I was just in the UK. This guy is as good as it gets. Andrew, it looks like yep. guys that know bodybuilding more than anybody, they think you are the best thing to come around in a long time. How does it feel? Well, it feels, it feels great to get such accolades from those uh, veterans. But for me... I will say I'm just, you know, like the regular guy. You just go to the go to the gym and go to compete and just have fun with the sports and that's it. I don't see myself as the, uh, you know, the VIP or the best of this or best of that. No, I see myself as just someone who just loves the sports and loves to compete and that's it. Well, uh, Andrew, I'm going to say that in Texas and in the UK, you were the best on stage. Did you envision yourself winning two pro shows in your first year as a pro bodybuilder? Uh, no, I never had a thought like that, no dreamt like that. I just I just only knew that I will go into the bodybuilding industry and just try to, you know, have fun with the sport and work my way up. But last year, I wasn't even thinking about this. And this year, everything just happened at the same time. So uh, it's a blessing. Yeah. I feel I feel proud. I feel I feel so blessed and honored because um you only find this kind of things like very few people like last year and I believe every year everyone has their time and every year someone like this like comes up. Like last year was what was uh Nick <laughs> Nick uh Walker. Yeah. yeah, and this year I think you know I'm blessed to be the rookie of the year. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. No pun intended with blessing our Debu, but he would disagree with you. But that's okay. George, <laughs> George, uh, let's make you lose some followers right off the bat. Is Andrew Jack the rookie of the year or is blessing our Debu the rookie of the year? There's the, Listen, these two, you can't come in between them, bro. I try to mess with them. They're like brothers. They are like brothers, seriously. So I, I love that about them. They're from the same area. And they're both actually, it's a, it, I think they're like a new breed, man, for bodybuilding. You know, because 
we we do have a lot of good bodybuilders, but these guys, man, I mean, you know, they're they're pretty. They're pretty to look at. And it doesn't matter how much I tell people, you know what I mean? Like looking at them in the picture or online, it's totally different than seeing those two gentlemen up on that stage. I mean, it really, it's totally different. And even one of like the head judge of the Olympia, Steve Weinberger, he said, he said, George, I'm going to tell you, seeing Blessing, because he saw Blessing on the stage, he goes, seeing Blessing live on the stage, it's totally different than, you know, just seeing him in pictures and stuff. So it, I, I, I like it. I love those two, man. Those two guys are just amazing. You know, they're amazing. They're, they're just beautiful people. Of so I think we lost uh, George for a second here. Nope. George, can you hear us? Yeah. We just lost you for a second. I just have one more question to you. Sean Ray said, Sean Ray made a comparison and said, in my opinion, Andrew Jack is the Dennis Wolf of our era. Beautiful lines. He has the muscularity. You know, he's just pretty to look at. And he has the ability to go on to win the Arnold and place very high at the Olympia. Uh, you as a coach, if you were to make a comparison, would you say he's the Dennis Wolf of our era? Would you mention another bodybuilder? Or you think he's on a class of his own? Man, I, I think I think he's, he's prettier than Dennis Wolf. You know, I mean, with all due respect to Dennis Wolf, you know, Andrew have his back start all the way from his waist up. You know what I mean? That's that's what was like missing on Dennis. I mean, Dennis is an amazing bodybuilder. I don't take nothing away from him. You know, I think I think this guy, man, we're witnessing something is so pretty. You know, all over, he's not missing anything. Nothing is like you know out of out of place. And in time, I think he's going to be very very dangerous. Flex, uh, well, you, you saw this guy. Nobody uh, rose as fast as you did as an IFBB Pro League uh, competitor. You are looking at this guy, Andrew Jack, and you know great genetics. Is this guy about to make history in bodybuilding? I think he's already made history um, in bodybuilding. <clears throat> and um, the question you uh, put to George, is he another Dennis Wolf? I would just um, put Andrew in a class of his own, you know, like um, yeah, like um, George said, you know, and and I'm I'm really cautious with comparing bodybuilders to each other or putting one down. We all been competitors, and we take that very personal, you know. We had feelings also, so I don't want to be disrespectful to Dennis Wolf. You know, he's a great friend of mine, and he was an awesome competitor, one of the best competitors out of Germany, right? But. I would have to put Andrew in a class of his own, and I wouldn't compare him to anybody else except Andrew. Andrew is the only person who's going to beat Andrew, you know. So his mental mindset, physically, he's the only one who's going to be able to defeat himself. Hey, Bob, I, I have talked to other judges. I have talked to some of the experts in the industry. Nobody, nobody, and even Chris Cormier and I, were like, what can he improve? And it took us about 30 minutes on primetime muscle to find something wrong with him. We're like, <laughs> he can do his sideburns better. You know, he can cut his hair a little bit better. It, have you seen him personally? Is this guy a genetic marble of our times? Well, he's definitely a genetic marble. I haven't seen Andrew in person uh, yet, but obviously I will on the Olympia stage. And uh, he, uh, to answer that, that same question that, that you asked the other guys, he's better than Dennis Wolf. And that's with all due respect to Dennis Wolf. He's bigger, taller, Wider, believe it or not, uh, small waist, flaring thighs, and big arms. That, that's wide shoulders. He's got all the attributes of a champ. Now all you got to do is get him in some better company. You know, things do change a little bit, as Flex will tell you, when you stand up there with the big boys. You know, when we get him next to Big Rami, we get him next to uh, uh, Bonac and, and uh, Chupan and, you know, the rest of the primetime players, um, that's when you're going to separate the, the the champs from everybody else. And Andrew's got all the attributes. Uh Flex, I, I would invite you to um, uh, agree or disagree with me. I ab absolutely believe that in that first call out this year, that Andrew Jack will be in it. Oh, 100 percent. That's without a doubt. Um, Amen. Yeah, Amen. I mean, and I don't and, listen. Uh, we don't take these things lightly. I mean, you literally got to go back to, to to the era of Flex 
and Lavroni and, and, and some of the superstars that we've had, to have a guy come out of the amateurs, make an instant impact, win a couple of pro shows, and then actually get to the Olympia and do something. And I, I think we may be witnessing that this year. We're going to see how it plays out. But, man, what a phenomenal year. Uh, Andrew, congratulations. My only question to you, my brother, you, is uh, how am I announcing you? Am I going by Andrew Jack or am I going with your real name? <laughs> Andrew Jack. <laughs> you know what? And correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Bob, yeah, you have to go with Andrew Jack. <laughs> you're more of a his uh, historian than I am, but I don't think anyone has turned pro and won – um, pro competition since I did. I know, um, I don't even think Kevin's done that. So I think nope. other than myself, uh, winning four uh, pro victories and then placing second in Olympia, I, I nope. think Andrew since me. Is the only guy to... even close flex was Phil Heath. Yeah, and uh, yeah, definitely. It would be yeah, see, and that, You're talking about some, some elite company here, right? I mean, listen, we've seen some great bodybuilders come down over the last five, six, seven years, but none of them have had an instant impact. Everybody's kind of had to get their way into the Olympic, get your feet wet. I'm telling you right now, Andrew can stand up with all those guys, and it's going to change. Uh, you guys all know we've all done interviews together, and, and, and some of us longer than others as me and Flex go way back in Georgia, of course, when, when we were amateurs, amateurs. Um, but it, it's it's not easy to, to make an instant impact, but it's all about comparison. Andrew changes the game, okay? And he changes the game because him – and Big Rami, now he's bigger, he's taller than Big Rami. They're both just as wide, right? Big boy, you got some big boys up there, right? But that puts all the other guys in kind of a, I don't want to say second class, but you know what I mean, like a, a second comparison because they're all about the same height, okay? Nick Walker, Bonac, Labrada, um, Hadi Chupan, right? All those, they're all about, you know, uh, uh, Brandon Curry, I'll do respect to the former Olympia champ. Um, they're all about, They're all very comparative to each other. But Andrew puts himself in an instant category with with uh, comparison with Big Rami. Big difference. Now, um, I, I there was a lot of speculation, George, uh, in regards to was he better in Texas? Was he better in the UK? Which one was the best physique? And at the Olympia News, I said, well, it's really irrelevant because he's never going to look the same, right? At the Mr. Olympia, he's going to look different than all those two shows. What's relevant is that he won another show. And I also said that this guy by the name of Andrew Jack, based on his genetics and the amount of muscle he has, he can win a show at 90%. He can win a show at 85%. Flex Wheeler can win a show at 82%. Dexter Jackson can win a show at 87%. Some guys are just genetically more gifted. They have better lines, and they're capable of beating guys that might be at 100%. Do you agree or disagree? Well, he, he, we know. I mean, as far as genetic, listen, we always knew that Andrew have a great genetic. That's why Flex, first thing he thought of me, and he called me, he said, listen, I'm, I'm training this guy, but when it comes to nutrition, George, I want you to be part of our team. Because Flex kind of like show him poses. Flex show him, you know, his, his coach and training. When he comes to the USA, he's going to kick his ass, you know. I'm hoping. <laughs> and I'm only doing his diet and stuff. And that's one of the reasons Flex, you know, put us together. You know what I'm saying? So now when people tell you, listen, people don't have the eyes. Maybe there is four or five people in the industry that they have the eyes that I do. And let me tell you something. He was tighter than Texas. The only thing is the light was compare glute wise. Like if you look at glute over there, even that it's not a glute competition, but that's the last thing that goes on the man is glutes and hamstring actually look better here, but the light was off. It wasn't really the, the, the Texas. They have an awesome light. And honestly, that's why I'm looking forward, man, for, for the Olympia because the Olympia, they have just an amazing light and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. So yeah, back back to your question. You know what? A lot of people, you're right. You know, I have brought people, you know, usually on purpose, you know, like an 80 or 90 percent because you don't want to just like drop everything at one time. You know what I'm saying? And this is what me and Andrew in in you know Flex talked about. Like, listen, man, just nice and easy, no rush. I mean, dude, if I tell you guys what Andrew Jacks is using. <laughs> As far as supplements and stuff, 
I'm not kidding you, man. People getting ready for a state show, they probably use more. And this is honest to God true. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm happy that, you know, I'm like, you know, let everybody talk. But you guys go on to see, man, that next 10, 11 weeks, this guy is just going to grow, actually, into the show. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited. I'm excited. And, and like I said, you know, I can't wait till he, you know, be around us here in the U.S. So Flex keep an eye on him, like kick his butt, you know, so we can just make we can keep on making some nice improvement. You know, you know Eric, one of the one of the most impressive things um, and <clears throat> like George says, we're never going to disclose Andrew's personal business. Right. That's not what the sport about. That's not what we're going to talk about. But you have to understand how many times have he competed in his life. So even myself, right, to be honest, I've competed probably over 40 times as an amateur before I even got into MPC because I was back in the AAU days. Yeah. So I was learning, I was developing. But if you look at Andrew, one MPC show, that's oh, yeah. it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So look at how much he's changed from his amateur debut at the Arnold Amateur and then look how much he's changed at the Texas show. And then just in a matter of less than two months or a little bit over two months, how much he's changed going into the Arnold Classic. And we still have uh, approximately 11 weeks to get ready for the Olympia. So he has less mileage than any competitor that he's ever competing against or going to compete against. So that right there tells you this young man's potential because no one, even myself, has done what he's done in such a short period of time. Uh, so that's scary. That's damn scary. Well, yes, it is. I agree with you, Flex. Andrew, uh, yep. obviously a lot of compliments, um, but it, looking at your physique and looking at your posing, what would you what would you say is a body part or a posing or something that you feel like you need to improve? Oh, I think. Uh... My back shots, everything about my back shots has to be improved. And um, more, you know, like confidence on stage, on posing, not on stage, but on posing. Well, and Andrew, uh, after yeah. all these compliments, if you don't have confidence on stage, you and I are. <laughs> no, no. I have no, confidence no. on stage. And, and, you know, like I can play, you know, like the mind game, like backstage too, which I did in the UK. But um you know like but the confidence in posing that's what i'm talking about you know especially on the uh the back shots because sometimes i feel okay i'm like getting it and oh uh i, I missed it oh okay hang on hang on you know so but it's a process because because i believe i'm still learning and i'm still yet to tap into my potential because um i'm still i'm still new in the industry you know i'm still learning every day i'm still Backstage, I'm learning every day. I'm learning from shows after shows. You know, I you know, like, you know, I like play everything back. I watch and I learn. Some even I meet I meet the judges and and you know, like I take some some lessons also. You know, so it's uh, I'm still learning. So, Bob, I I I you know we have this new show. Let me do some uh, campaigning for the new show. It's called Prime Time Muscle with myself, Chris Cormier, and Tim Wilkins. And uh, we had pictures of Andrew Jack on the big screen. And we looked at his front pictures and we said, okay, there's really nothing that we can say about this guy. He, he just looks flawless. We looked at his side pictures and he looked also flawless, dense. Maybe he could sit a little bit more on the poses. So when he's sitting next to, you know, Hadi Shupan and Big Rami, those guys are dense. If he just sits a little bit more, he'll have a little bit more density. But when I looked at his back shot, especially the back double biceps and his large clavicle bones, I almost feel like this guy has the potential to have a back like Joel Stubbs. Remember Joel Stubbs? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't forget him. Biggest pilot in the world. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? How that guy fits into a cockpit is beyond me. But <laughs> So he has, he has space to put muscle on that yeah. back double biceps and make it a Joe Stubbs like, which then we're talking about a quite of a scary human being. Well, according to Martin Fitzwater, you look like a, a bag of chocolate milk, which uh, oh, I'm, not exactly, I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I don't even, I don't even know what kind of if that's a dig. I, I'm not I'm not quite sure. But uh, <laughs> listen, uh, not not to get off on a rant here, but uh, I did see some of the exchanges going back and forth with some of these new guys. Flex, we gotta we gotta get to these new guys, man, and teach them how to talk some some real smack and stuff. First of all, Martin, I'm going to put this out as a, a, a public service announcement to you. Worry about the guy in third place, okay? You weren't even close to Andrew or second, okay? Uh, uh, worry about like James Hollings had it in the other. And I don't know. For all I know, I wasn't there, okay? So maybe Flex can You're or right. George, if they were yeah. there, they, they can attest. But you Great. might have been closer to the fifth place guy than, than the third place guy. So, Great. but listen, kid, you better get a bit of, a little bit thicker skin here if you want to be in this game for any sense. This guy loses, and I see his IG. And he's talking about taking two years off and this and that. Listen, man, everybody starts at a certain place. You've done okay in your short career, but don't ever blame the athlete, okay? You know what Andrew did? He did the same thing you did. He went there to try to win a bodybuilding show. He wasn't judging himself. Now, you want to take some exception to the to the judges? Go ahead. I mean, I personally, I thought they were right. Go ahead. <laughs> so... <laughs> Derek, yeah, I mean, you've been a top judge for years. Listen, you, you all make your assessments, and it all gets compiled. And hey, listen, maybe somebody had him higher, maybe somebody had him lower. But the consensus is that that's where he plays. But don't ever point fingers at the other competitors as if Andrew did something wrong. All he did was bring a great package that was good enough for the judge to say that's the winner. But yeah, I a little agree. thin skin for me, Flex. You know, I really, uh, I really agree with you, Bob. Um, you know, I just. I don't get that, and and, and personally, uh, I don't think that's a um, character of a champion. Um, all of us go on stage, and we try to do our best. We're trying to better ourselves. We're trying to make money. We're trying to take care of our family. So, me personally, um, even in our era, I never understood why an athlete would go and bat mouth another athlete in the magazines after their placing. <clears throat> I always truly felt exactly what you said, man. If you're really serious about your game, go holler at the judges because they're the yep. ones who really made the decision, I, I and, and this is just me personally, I'm not calling them a punt, but I would consider myself a punt to go at another athlete who's only trying to better themselves. You know, that's like that's like two guys shooting at the same girl and one guy got to continuously put the that's other right. guy down instead of shooting his own game to be the best. So I don't get that. I don't think it's respectful. And I come from an old school where you make a comment about somebody, they might want to come back and holler at you real, you know, um, and put their hands on you. That's that's where I come from. So you're right. These these new guys, and first and foremost, they haven't even established themselves and done oh. anything to be talking, you know. And here they are mouthing off like they they created a sport or they're a big spice in a sport. I just don't get it. But me personally, I don't feel that's a uh, character of a champion to go and talk about another man who's only trying to do as best as you can, uh, as you yeah. are. Well, it brings up, if I could just, again, I don't want to make this into a rant on, on other people because we got bigger uh, stuff to talk about here. But um, listen, the bottom line is, like I say, you better get a thicker skin, kid. You know, and be in this for the long, if you're in this for the long haul, okay, you need to change your attitude because the bottom line is right now, mentally, not physically, the kid's got a good physique, okay? Let's not take that away from him. Yeah. But mentally, you're not ready to be a champion. You're not mentally prepared to be the champion. Much like I, I've always said, Kai Green's biggest uh, problem uh, aside from Phil Heath, was his own mind. His mind kept him. He was Kai was never in a position mentally to be the champion. He never put himself in that position. He never accepted himself as the number one. And that's why he always won the Arnold. And every time he go up against Phil at the Olympia, his physique wasn't 100% because he wasn't mentally prepared to be the champ. He had a fear of success. <laughs> All right. Clearly, Andrew does not have a fear of success, and uh, he let his body do the speaking. So good for you, bro. But like I say, this is just, you know, I'm pointing this at Martin, but this is for a lot of guys I see out there these days who they seem to have a, an issue with the other competitors or they, they're, they're trying to talk. Listen, guys, I'm, we're all for, for some smack talk out there that's good and healthy and it's, it's good for the sport. But don't ever blame the other guy for beating you because all he did is go in there and kick your ass. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Bob, you know, we judge <laughs> It's part of our job to be available for feedback after the event. You know, we are trained and taught to give, you know, individual feedback. Every time there's a pro show, uh, we, we go to backstage and we give feedback to the competitors, why they placed, where they placed. We understand competitors want to win and we want them to win. It's perfectly OK if you're frustrated. And like Flex and you said, you know, um, your frustration 
should be directed at your work at the gym. You know, go back to the gym and try to be better. The competitor that placed ahead of you, he just signed up to compete. And I often say, if you don't know how to lose like a champion, you don't deserve to win as a competitor. You know, you yeah. don't deserve to win as a competitor. I've had times in my life where I lost. And, um, you know, in, I was just mentioning this a few year, a few weeks ago. In January 2016, I lost my mother uh, on a Thursday. On a Friday, I did a check-in. On a Saturday, I judged the show. And I gave feedback to the competitors. And I buried my mom on Monday. It's nobody's fault that I lost my mother. It's nobody's fault that I won a show. I lost a show. We have to do our job. And Andrew Jack has to do his job. And I think Martin will have the opportunity to eventually come back to Andrew and apologize and say, hey, I'm young. I'm emotional. I made a mistake. And I'm sorry. I know he will, he will eventually come around. But going back to Andrew Jack. Andrew. Now, these guys are putting you on the first call out of the Mr. Olympia, which is which is pretty high remarks um, to, to go against guys like Big Rami and and uh, Hadi Shupan, Hunter Labrada and Nick Walker. Now, do you have a strategy if you get on that first call out? Do you have a strategy to expose some of these guys in terms of their posing? Because, you know, when you get to that point in flex, uh, George, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong. You might be placed next to Hunter Labrada, or you might be next to Hadi Shupan, and maybe their physiques are different, and maybe you hit your pose different based on whoever is next to you to expose some of their weaknesses. Is that something that you're planning in terms of strategizing at the Mr. Olympia? Yes, of course, 100%. 100%. Like, like, um, um, 110% confidence of my front shots, and I just have to go back to the drawing board and work on my back shot. But for front shots, I can, I'm not being cocky, but I'm being very confident here because uh, I'm blessed, I know that for uh, for, for sure. And front shots, I can compete with those guys mentally also. To make them know that I'm ready for the back shots. Okay, it would be it would be a tough one, but uh, we'll work on it. We'll work Let on me it. jump in there. He will be 100% confident in his back shots. That's my job, and I'm going to start <laughs> taking care of that. When, when well, no the, one is perfect. Think, like, yeah. like I believe, no. I believe no, no. even if even the great king, Roddy Coleman has his flosses. Jay Cutler has it. Everyone, everyone has got their flosses, but. You just have to to capitalize more on 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 your advantage and tackle. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, let it's me tell you, you got, you got the right team in place with Flex and George. George will bring in. He will dial you in one hundred percent, and Flex will make sure as ment you're as mentally strong and prepared as you're going to be. My only advice is, and of course, they're always the the, the right advice is, bro, at your size and all that. I'd be going out there like I'm freaking Godzilla, man. I'd be King Kong on that stage. 100%, 100%. I don't, listen, I don't want to see this little, you know, that little stuff where you do the ads. Nah, and the nah. Listen, you got to go out, you know, you got to do the Arnold. You, you got to come out like the big man, right? Don't hide away. Go out there like you own that freaking stage. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah. You yeah, right. yeah. I want to see big most musculars. I want to see sweeping back shots. I don't want to see, don't ever go to the ground, bro. Like, like no. take an old page out of Lee Haney's book, okay? Don't that's ever it. kneel. I don't want to see all that frilly shit, man. I want to see 20 most musculars from you, and that's it. And then take Blessing with you on the way out because let me tell you, that guy, I love that guy. Let me tell you, Blessing, he's right behind you, bro. You're like a bigger version of Blessing. I, I saw Blessing. I'm like, man, that yeah. kid's pretty big. And then I saw you, and I'm like, oh, gee, they're making him bigger and bigger in, I, in Nigeria, apparently. <laughs> he got some freaks out of Nigeria. Good Help job. Help me understand this. Blessing, Andrew Jack, and Simpson Dowda are all from Nigeria. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. So should we yeah. just should we just book our flights to Lagos, Nigeria, <laughs> and start recruiting people from Nigeria? Because you got to be kidding me. Simpson Dowda is looking incredible. I went to see Blessing in Florida. He's out of his mind growing, and this guy Andrew Jack looks like a real time Superman. Uh, Flex. You know the game. If you have superior genetics, you are a step ahead. 
Are we talking about a certain area in the world where people have better genetics and it could be a prospecting place for future bodybuilders? Well, I mean, yeah, that's it's it's the truth. It's about matchups, right? And and at the very beginning, it's about your genetics. Listen, I can never go up against Shaquille O'Neal. I don't have the genetics. They'll always yeah. be superior to me, right? <laughs> so first and foremost, you have to have those genetics. And one thing I've always, uh, uh, and I hope Andrew, I don't think he'll be offended by this. I've always joked with him and said, man, you're pure blood. You're pure blood, man. You're Nigerian. No. Your blood is not tainted. And it's just the truth. Um, but it's, it's not only Nigeria uh, as far as bodybuilding. You look at UFC, look at the world champions in UFC. They're from Nigeria right now. So um, I think, you know, um, the sport has become more aware in foreign different countries. Even in the Middle East, they have some of the most incredible genetics. So it's about genetics and matchups. So, of course, it's always a superior about genetics. And you said it earlier, whether it's fair or not, right? Uh, some people, because they're so genetically gifted, they can be, you know, um, subpar 100% and defeat another person when they're 100%. But it's 100% about genetics. Again, I can be 100% on my game and take it to Shaquille O'Neal. He can be like 30%. He's going to win. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, uh, George, the, the uh, professional sports are cruel. Some people are born to do it, right? Some people are just born to do it. Some people are not born to do it. The low lats of George Fair, uh, of uh, Kai Green, were just something that, you know, it was unprecedented how his lats were low. You look at the muscle bellies of Phil Heath and, and now these guys. I, is there anything that somebody who's not genetically gifted can do to improve their physique? What would you be your advice? Listen, there's nothing, nothing impossible. You know what I'm saying? But certain people have certain genetic, you know, I mean, like we witnessed Branch Warren. Branch didn't have the craziest genetic as a pretty wise, you know, but the guy went as far as to be second at the Olympia with whatever God offered them. You know why? Because he capitalized on that hardness, on that, you know, dense muscle and stuff. So every man can, you know, achieve something. You need to remember, man, we, you know, all of us, we were born with 50 trillion cells and all these cells are controlled by our brain. So you can really move stuff. We can really do amazing stuff. Dude, if I could heal cancer, you know, I hold my own self. I'm sure, you know, Andrew or, any, or anybody out there can really improve his physique the way he wants you. It's all about like asking yourself, what do you really need to do? What do you want to do? How bad do you really want it? You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's it's a mental, it's actually a mental game. All start in your brain. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we all listen. Flex been through hell and back, but he used to talk to me and me and him, we decided, listen, man, we need to stay in touch because it's all about your mental. It's all about you being strong to be all those obstacles. So the same thing when it comes to bodybuilding, it comes to people that, you know, they, they want to be champion. I can't tell anybody, uh, bro, I, I honestly could remember, still remember, we sat down like, like this. And we didn't have, you know, stuff that you can see our faces, but we did an MD and it was, I think, uh, was Chris Aciro, was uh, Chad Nichols and everybody. When I told them, you know, they asked me who's going to be the top five at the Olympia. And I told them the first name came to my mind is Branch Warren. You know, I said, Branch, this, you know, I, I kind of called it all. And they all laughed at me at the time, man. They laughed. They said, Branch Warren, we're not saying top 10. We're, th we're talking about top five. I said, listen, you guys, whoever stands next to Branch is going to look fat. You know, I mean, he went in 2009 to beat the former yeah. Mr. Olympia, Dexter Jackson, the blade. You know why? Because he looked freaky, because he wanted it so bad. Like, he used to talk to me, man, I want to be there. I want to be, I want to prove him all wrong. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. It all start in here. You know what I'm saying? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You know, every single meal, every single rep, it counts towards your dream. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a dream, I tell everybody out there, a bodybuilder, if they just started or whatever, you know, if you have a dream and you give it 100%, you are going to get 100% result, period.
Yeah, and I feel that everybody has genetics, right? Everyone yes. truly does have yes. genetics. I think yeah. what people misunderstand is some people are more pleasing to the eye to look at. Yes. That, yes. But everyone has genetics. I just seen somebody said Doran didn't have genetics. Of course he did. He had genetic ability to have to create muscle mass. He had a genetic ability to create dryness and hardness. Everyone has genetics. I just think people really confuse the word genetics versus pleasing to the eye. Uh, to look. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's that old cliche, right? Hard work yeah. trumps uh, talent when talent refuses to work hard. But when mm -hmm. talent works hard, you have a Kobe Bryant, you have a Michael Jordan, you have a Larry Bird. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, so and you have an Andrew J. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Andrew, who's your favorite yeah. bodybuilder of all times? Who's the guy that inspired you? Or maybe a few bodybuilders that growing up, when I was young in Brazil, my brother and I, you know, my brother has that black and white picture of uh, Flex Wheeler still in his house since um, 1993. Uh, I loved uh, Dorian Yates and... Um, um, some of the bodybuilders of the 90s. Who are the guys that you looked on the magazines or social media that inspired you? Uh, to be honest, Flex Wheeler, Charles Glass, just two of them. Flex Wheeler Andrew, and Charles check, Glass. check is in the mail. Thank you. I'll send it right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Bob, we had a conversation about the 1999 Mr. Olympia lineup in the 2022 Mr. Olympia lineup. Now, taking that in consideration, 1999, Ronnie Coleman had just won one Mr. Olympia. You know, we can't reference him as an eight-time Mr. Olympia. You right. know, and a lot of people thought, well, Flex is going to come in in 1999 and win this thing, and he'll be the next dynasty. But looking at those guys where they were, 1999, and looking at this lineup, 2022, which one do you think is the best one in terms of talent? Wow. No, this isn't even close. <laughs> Listen, I hate to be the, the old guy, you know what I mean? And we got to sit there like the like the old guys and the Muppets up on the balcony talking about the old days. But, um, <laughs> Listen, you already, you already dated how old you are. Just Muppets. Listen, we can't fool anybody anymore. The only thing I got, you know, I guess I still got a head of hair here, Flex. So, but, but the bottom line is, is we're from the old school. Listen, 99 is a whole different animal. I mean, and they're not comparable. I don't like when people compare errors in any sport. Okay. When they sit there and talk about, you know, what would Tyson done against uh, Muhammad Ali? Listen, you can't compare, you know, those two. You can't compare Babe Ruth. You know, to and you know, to to Aaron Judge. Now, you know, you don't compare the eighty-five Bears to whoever. You know, it's just you got different circumstances. It's a different time, different place, different everything. Right? The ninety-nine Olympian, anything in that era, was very, very loaded and difficult. We talk about quote, and I hate to use this phrase, but stacked class. Okay, those are about as stacked as they get. The difference between ninety-nine and like the twenty twenty-two is, listen, there's some damn good bodybuilders out there, and they're the best in the world for now, okay? But, yeah, if you were to transport them in time, yeah, it wouldn't translate very well. The physiques of 99, 98, 2000, any of those uh, uh, early, you know, late 90s, early 2000 years was very difficult. You had some some damn good talent up there. Uh, not that it, the talent now isn't good, but genetically the, the bodies are a little bit better, and it was a deeper lineup. You know, when Flex was, was hitting those Olympia, I was only in one, so I'm not – putting myself in anywhere near that category, but Flex hit them all, okay? When he was in there battling against these guys, I mean, look at some of the guys that you had. You know, you're talking about Dorian Yates. You're talking about Ronnie Coleman. You're talking about Dexter and Lavroni and Sean Ray and... and uh, Nasser El Sambadi. Nasser El Sambadi. I mean, you could, you could go down... Yes, the so. difference between then and now is you go down to the 10th place guy back then, you go, damn, like, this guy's, you know... <laughs> it's like, wow, you know, that, that was 10th? And you well, go, yeah. Milos, yeah. Milo, 1999, Milos Sarsev was 10th, Dexter was 9th, and I believe Jay Cutler was 15th. Um, wow. And, you can uh, remember that? Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, I, you I go, got that uh, written down or you actually remember it? Wow. wow. I, do, I do remember that. I was just yeah. looking at whoever won the 2011 Mr. USA's. I just I go on the internet and I, I look at competitors in different categories and I go, 
that figure girl turned pro in 2011 and she went on to win. I love, I love watching this stuff. But my point is, Bob, we don't know where this 2022 generation is going to end up. We could be talking about a guy here, Andrew Jack, who's going to win maybe four or five Mr. Olympias. And right now we're just yeah. looking at him as a rookie. We don't know if Blessing, we don't know if uh, Hunter Labrada can win three Mr. Olympias. And then we look back at 2022 and say, hey, those guys were pretty ferocious as well. Now, well yeah. I mean, it's all relative, right? I mean, that's why I don't like comparing errors because, look, at, quite frankly, I don't, I don't care what anybody today would have done in 99. Who gives a crap? It's irrelevant, right? And I don't care what anybody then would have done today. Listen, you could plunk out guys from the 1970s and put them in today and go, well, this guy would have got crushed, right? I mean, again, two different eras, different everything, okay? All it. Andrew Jack has to worry about is who he's standing up there against. There is, is, is the great, late, great Tom Prince used to say, like, buddy, there is no defense in bodybuilding. I get okay? it. You didn't like my question, but now I'm going to get you back and make you lose followers on Instagram. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. All you ever do is make me gain followers, and the only thing I've ever gotten negative is those stupid dinosaurs people keep sending me from your boy in Brazil. Stop sending me dinosaurs, people. Okay, it's good. Stop. If, if I could give one advice to anybody oh, no. who has ever done a internet uh, thing, don't ever say anything bad about the Ramon Dino Brazilian Jeez. competitor. Your inbox <laughs> will be filled with dinosaurs. I'm yeah, never dinosaurs. Gonna... <laughs> okay, they're just millions of Brazilians just send you dinosaurs. But Bob, yeah. tell me the top five of the Mr. Olympia 2022. Let's put you in an awkward situation. Wow. Well, I, I don't think it's awkward at all. I think the the first three spots are – you know, these guys ain't gonna really gonna go anywhere. Now it depends on who shows up and how. But you got yeah. big Rami defending. If he comes in similar, you know, he's gonna be the guy to beat, right? He's in the pole position. You you can't discount the uh, Bonac and you can't discount Hadi Chupan. All right. These guys have earned their way there and they're very complete. Okay. The difference between a good short man and a good tall man is the short guys, as George will tell you, they can get there a lot quicker. Okay. But when the good tall man finally puts it together. He, he's a he's a tougher guy to, to beat, you know, and this is why the Arnolds of the world and listen, Dorian wasn't short. Lee Haney was, you know, 5'11". I mean, but, you know, they got a, a much better, um, uh, you know, symmetrical flowing physique. OK, Andrew Jack, I think, will, can move right in there. I would put him in fourth. I can actually see him in that top five. All right. And I can see with all due respect, I can see Hunter and Nick and uh, who else? Uh, Samson yeah, Brandon is Brandon Curry, part. man. You forget um, Brandon Curry. I was going to say Brandon, Brandon Curry. Curry is actually almost 290 pounds right now. George, George, <laughs> let him Listen, get in trouble, George. That's let not a good thing. <laughs> Listen. No, he looks good. I hope he looks good, but let me tell you something. Him getting – he doesn't need to be bigger, okay? And you got to give credit where it's due. He's the only other guy in that stage with an Olympia title, so you can never discount Brandon Curry, but he's a wild card. And if he tries to go – you know, I know you work with him, George, right? Before, yeah. Yeah. If he tries to come in too big, you can forget it. Listen, Andrew is a game changer. And I say that in the following context, okay? He's going to be big. He's going to be in shape. He's going to be dialed in. And he's going to command that stage with that height and that and that presence, okay? And, and even though I know you think you don't look great in your back shots, believe me, bro, they're, they're not as bad as you think, okay? We're looking at him. You're not, all right? You'll be just fine. Just do what Flex tells you to do and follow whatever George writes down on that piece of paper. You'll be fine, okay? But all those things are going to combine to be a, a bad day for a lot of these other guys because he's going to yeah. make Nick Walker and Hunter, Hunter and I don't know, you know, pick anybody else that's in that mix, right? He's going to make them look very small. Right. Along with yeah. Samson. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, that's and Samson, let me tell you something about Samson, Dauda, okay? Samson's a wild. If there's ever truly a dark horse, it's Samson. This kid's yeah. got it all. He ain't missing nothing. Beautiful physique. Great presence on stage. If if he can nail his conditioning, he is truly a wild card. He could be up there in that first call out. But listen, you can't yeah. have ten guys in the first call out, Flex, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you, 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 I think we're potentially talking about the years um, when when we were amateurs. I remember looking up to Ron Love, and Ron Love was only tenth in Olympia. That was back in the days where placing tenth in Olympia was a respectful thing. Yeah, and you're spot on. You said I've always said, you know. A one-story house is easier to build faster. 
uh, and it's beautiful. Yep. The two-story house is going to take a little bit longer, but once that house is built, one story can't compete against it anymore. Once That's again, right. it's all about matchups. So it's going to be very interesting to have somebody like Andrew, like Samson, who carries not only size and condition, but also that height. Uh, we haven't had that in a long time, and I think it's going to change the dynamics of having guys like that. And you're right. Uh, Rami is a person to beat. He earned and he's qualified to have that respect, and he has that respect and deserves that. But now you're going to have guys who are competing against him that are taller than him and matches yeah. his mass. And I would argue to say possibly, uh, and I'm being nice, have better symmetrical balance than he does. So it's going to be really interesting how these shorter guys do with people like Andrew and like Samson and other big men walking up there on stage. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> they're just more impressive. Um, it's just more, it's more, it's more to look at. You know, I, I've always said, you know, me and Sean were very similar in various different ways, but it's very difficult to compare us when I'm five inches taller than him and outweighing him by 30 pounds. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what he does then because I'm so much more to look at. And there's not a knock on him. Once again, yeah. this sport, all sports are truly about matchups. Yeah. It's not really how good you are. It's the man that you're standing next to. And when you're standing next to a superior man or you're boxing against a superior man, what are you going to do about it? Uh, but George, George, and, and I just want to say this, George is 100% right. Flex. How, how does those guys go and dream? They outwork the bigger men. They outwork them. They outcondition them. They outwork them. And that's how they can still dream and be better. Look at Franco Colombo. Look at his yeah. height and everything. But he dominated because he outworked everybody else. So I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Sure. My, my question to you, Flex, is based don't on put me in a hot spot. I don't have followers already. I'm trying to get to a million. <laughs> I keep giving that to Bob. I need to get to a million, so don't put me in a hot spot. No, uh, don't worry, uh, George Farah. George Farah. I'll let George go first, and then you go first. George, does Andrew Jack height and lines expose Big Rami? Listen, if Big Rami comes in. The way he looked last year, I think he's going to have a problem. But if Big Rami comes in 100%, nobody on that stage is going to be able to compete at him this year. But he needs to be 100%. If he's not 100%, he could really have a flaws real quick. You know what I'm saying? But Rami comes in the way he's supposed to. It's going to be hard even for Andrew to beat him this year. You know what I'm saying? Or anybody. Or anybody else. You know, or anybody else. And I'm being honest. Yeah, I second that. I second that 100%. I, I, I got to be honest. And, and I've talked to uh, George about this. And I've talked to Andrew about this. I'm, I'm concerned with Rami because he's working harder than he ever has before. Dennis literally flew down to Dubai and he's working with him. That's never happened before. I've I never seen him have money too. Yeah, I've never seen yeah. Rami work this hard um, and being pushed this, uh, this hard. So, uh, again... It's about matchups and timing. So, you know, I want, Ron, I want you know, the best man to win no matter what. Yes. But now saying this, sometimes you have to be patient. Listen, um, uh, Jay didn't try to take me on. didn't try to take Ronnie on when we were at our peak. Come on, you're wasting time. You know what I mean? So no matter what, you know, what, what Andrew has to op offer is what a lot of other guys, big men don't have. He has time on his side. So... Say Rami just does his job, comes in 100%, makes it a battle and win. It's still about timing. You know, Andrew has so much time on his shoulder. We're not going to push him. We're not going to put him in harm's way because we know we have time on his fight. And even like uh, Ronnie said in one of his interviews yesterday, you know, um, when, 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 when uh, Andrew is coming to his full potential, probably Rami would be exiting in the game right then. And that's perfect timing. That leaves that dormant. So not only that, but it's, it's about matchups. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, no matter what, right, being a competitor and a, pr a true competitor, the best man should win. I don't give a F if you're from Mars. I don't care if you're purple. I don't care if you're straight, gay, lesbian, or whatever. The best person <laughs> should win on that damn stage. You got lesbians in the Olympian I know. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> the men's open. You know, hey, Bobby, you know better than that. I'm not going to answer that question. There ain't no, ain't no damn know. Nigerian lesbians, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no. They'll get murdered. Yeah, that's... No, 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 no. Nah. Listen, of course, of course Rami's working hard. He's got two wives to support. Could be three by the time the Olympia comes. <laughs> 
Listen, Rami but, but, is but, gonna be but, very um, hard for anybody to beat. That's the bottom line. Well, let me let me jump in there, uh, Tarek. If I can uh, get in on that question, because the U.S. doesn't expose Big Rami. No, it gives him great comparison, is what it does. Because right now, Rami towers over these guys, right? Yeah. They're all about yeah. the same height. Curry, Bonac, Chupan, right? They're all you know Hunter. They're, they're all about similar height, right? So Rami comes out there. He's a killing these guys size wise, right? He's not going to be able to do that against Andrew. Andrew gives like comparison. He's actually taller and just as wide, if not wider than Rami, right? Now I'll tell you what the miss well, I'll tell you what the um, uh what the strategy would be. If if the other big men come in on, and when I when I say on, I mean in good conditioning to match that. I'm talking about Samson, you know, it's it's six foot Blessing. tall. I'm, talk, I'm talking about uh your buddy Blessing. Blessing, again, he's not much uh, shorter than you are, right? He's, he's a tall guy, right? Yeah. You got these big boys. If they come in in shape, they also compare very favorably with yeah. the other big guys, and that's Andrew and Big Rami. All of a sudden, the short, smaller guys all kind of get grouped together, and let me tell you something. It really does show a separation sometimes for the judges. You know this, Derek, because you, you compare apples with apples, right? And unless somebody comes in there, like Flex said, right, the taller, bigger bodybuilders eventually will look a little bit more pleasing on stage, a little bit, you know, taller, a little bit broader, a little bit wider. It's like when we see a middleweight that looks great until you get the super heavyweight next to him, right? And then you right. go, oh, wait a minute here. <laughs> you know, I thought this guy might be in the mix, but you know what? A little too light well, to fight, too thin to win. Well, what Flex said and what you said, um, it, it's very accurate. Um, in the last call out at the Mr. Olympia, it was Big Ronnie, Hunter, Hadi, and Brandon. And all you could see in terms of matchups was one really big bodybuilder, right? Mm -hmm. And with the retirement of Roly Winkler, who was also a mass monster, Rami has exploded as possibly, you know, the only mass monster on that first call out. If Nick Walker is on that first call out, he takes a little bit of the impact of Big Rami being the only mass monster on that final call out. So like Flex said, you know, the sport is about matchups. If everybody is conditioned, the guy who's conditioned doesn't have that impact because everybody is conditioned. If everybody is at a certain, you know, size and then you got a guy who's a lot bigger, that guy is going to look different than the others. And Andrew will be definitely the tallest one there if he can manage the first call out. I have not seen him personally. It's very hard to judge a bodybuilder when you haven't seen him personally. I've asked a lot of the people that have seen him personally, and they have said this is one of the most impressive bodybuilders we've seen in the last 10 years. George, I want to um, finish with you, starting with you, and then we go into our finish. Um, mentally, Andrew Jack will be in his first Mr. Olympia. And you know that guys like Nick Walker, guys like Hadi Shupan and Brandon Curry, and even, I think some of the young guys are going to go after him, right? In, in that posing, in that those comparisons, they're not going to give him any break. What are you doing mentally to prepare him for that battle? Brother, you know, don't worry about this because – we already saw so many people talking, and, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do yeah. this. And then, oh, he's not coming. He's bitching out. He's not coming to the Arnold. You know what I told him? We get the visa. We're going to be there, and you guys can yeah. take a shot at him. So I'm going to tell these guys the same thing. They're going to take tuned. a shot at him. But that's not going to be, I'm telling you right now, this man, he might be the most humble guy you'll meet. Very nice, very, but mentally, <laughs> he's very prepared. Whatever me and him we talk, we execute. And and having Flex been through hell and back, he's with us. Forget it, man. We gotta have that mental game, hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Flex Wheeler, um, you 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 know this guy well. Um, is he ready for the Mr. Olympia? Is this guy gonna shock the world? I think he's 100% ready. <clears throat> when um, when me and Andrew talked on uh, Instagram for the first time, my question to him was, you know, what are you all about, man? You know, what are you, a strong guy? You know, what are you trying to do? And he's like, you know, I want to be the next Flex Wheeler. I want to bring the new generation Flex Wheeler. And I said, well, come down, let's talk. And he flew down from Dubai and we sat and talked in my living room. And that's when I really made a decision and understood how mature he is. So I said it before in another podcast, his maturity is off the charts. 
um, I think he's 100% uh, percent prepared for whatever he goes into. And he's not me. He doesn't have my hangups about winning and maturity and everything like that. He's a lot more mature than I am. That won't be the problem. That won't be the problem whatsoever. It won't be a, you know, I, I, I love watching him compete on stage because he exudes uh, uh, confidence. You know, his head is high. And that's one of the things we always talk about in posing, projection. Project that you're a champion. Be proud. Stand up tall, head high. So, nah, if they're looking for it, you know, like that, uh, the pump and iron where Arnold comes in and just demolishes everybody mentally before they walk on stage, yeah, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Gonna happen. Yeah. Andrew, I want to yeah. finish with you. There's millions and millions of young competitors. I was just in Brazil. I'm going to Canada. I'll be in the Philippines. And I was just in Brazil, and people were asking about Andrew Jack. You know, yeah. hey, is Andrew Jack going to win the Olympia? Talk to us about Andrew Jack. <laughs> What is your message to all the young bodybuilders? They look at you rising in the sport, you know, becoming an icon, becoming somebody that they want to be like. What's your message to all the young bodybuilders that love you and are going to be rooting for you at the Mr. Olympia? Well, first of all, uh, shout out to all the fans in Brazil. I've got a huge ton of, of fans in Brazil. And uh, Ramon also is my friend, and that's why you're getting all the dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Robert, that's why you're getting all the dinosaurs. So, uh, <laughs> all the crew there. Uh, it's just, it's just, I will say it's just... Um, You know, just just being humble, simple, and just enjoy what you're doing. And that's it. Just enjoy, just enjoy what you're doing. Don't, uh, you know, just uh, don't let don't listen or pay any attention to negativity or distraction or whatever. Just enjoy the sports and just be happy. Because um, even backstage there, you see me like you know, I'm dancing to someone's routine song. Like I'm just happy having fun, and I mean, you will see the 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 other guys like looking at me. That boy, you're crazy. I, you know, I'm I'm just having fun, like just like you know, being free and releasing like to myself. And some people don't like that, but for me, I don't care. It's just you know, that's just me. Well, yeah. If I looked at you, I would be dancing 24 hours a day. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Flex, you want to add something? No, no, no. I was just laughing. Yeah, I agree. If I looked like him, I'd be dancing backstage too because I'm about to bring two stage. So I'll add, I'll add something. Let me tell you, all these other guys in the Olympia, they should be shitting protein bricks right now. And I'll tell you why. Okay, because Andrew can get what they got, but they can't get what Andrew's got. That's going to be the difference of him coming on that. They can't get taller. They can't get wider. They can't get this. Right. That's going to be the difference when this guy walks out there. And I'm telling you, instant contender. And we're going to see how he matches up. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. And uh, on that announcement, Andrew, you got it. We'll go with Andrew Jack. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay well, tuned for the Olympia. Stay tuned. This is going <laughs> to be yes, one sir. of the most amazing <laughs> Olympias. It's going to be at the Zappos Theater. Go get your pay per view, get your tickets right now. Uh, 2022 Mr. Olympia is going to be one for the ages. Andrew Jack wins two pro shows in the beginning of his career. The expectations are high. We got a chance to see his personality today. He is very fun. He's simple. He's humble, but he's going to do his work. In his corner, he has coach George Farah, one of the greatest coaches of all times. He's coached Branch Warren, Dexter Jackson, In terms of confidence and posing, he might have one of the greatest of all times, Flex Wheeler. And the voice of bodybuilding, Bob, will be announcing his name as he storms the 2022 Mr. Olympia. My name is Tara Kelgindi, and I'll see all of you at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Thank you. Yes, sir. Awesome. Nice job, boys. Awesome. Thank Great. You. I've been holding.